Hello, motherfucker. Welcome yeah. today. So, did you finally no, get no, to no, see that no, freaking no, movie, no, no. The Platform? You don't, you don't get to be pleasant after making me sit through The Platform. You just you don't. <laughs> what have I ever done to you, man? <laughs> like, why are you... I mean... I, I, I just... It's almost okay. shy. Oh, sh- okay, I... Yeah, I just, I just wanted to see... Okay, the first movie, which was... Uh, shit, midsummer or midsummer, depending on whom you ask. Um, mm-hmm. I just, I, I liked the movie. Um, I mean, it wasn't perfect, but I liked the idea of it. The platform, I liked the idea also, but I had questions, and for me, it was just kind of, uh, it was a good idea, but there were just certain things about the movie that just kind of made it sort of mediocre to me. But I just wanted you to see it to see to, to hear what your thoughts were on the movie confirm I'm that sorry. it was shit <laughs> I don't in know like sense. it started off kind of good it started off I'm like oh this this there's a lot to build up to you know what I mean and uh, yeah. like I, like I said to you in the, in the previous re- um, review when we were talking about Midsummer's one thing I hate about movies, the, especially that have like a horror theme to them, and I, again, I wouldn't class this as a horror film. It wasn't creepy or scary, or it, it didn't really scare me. If that was the, what the director was going for, you done fucked up. Uh, no, it wasn't. It just, yeah, but one thing I hated was no resolution. Like it just. Oh. Eh, eh, it just. It horror out horror to movies. Work. I mean. But horror movies typically don't I resolve. Mean, yeah, least... that's my issue with them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you hate horror movies. My then. issue with, with horror films is more often than not the the big bad has no motive. Like, if you think about a lot of horror films, it's just uncontrolled, unbridled, unmotivated chaos. And it's just like, that makes no sense. But... Like, if you give me any motive, usually... I'll cling on to it, right? If it's greed, if it's power, if it's lust, if it's this, if it's that, if it's vengeance. Pick a lane, but just have a lane. But here's the thing, though. I think, at least, you know, the the major, should I say, the classics, the horror classics, of course, now it's a different time, right? Most of us are, most of us, the audience, are a little, I'll say, a little bit smarter. So we we feel we want characters that are fleshed out or at least fully fleshed out or at least somewhat fleshed out. But for you know the the classic horror characters, those stories I think were written from the point of view of the the victims because the victims don't know the backstory. They just know that there's this horrible thing that's you know that's either assaulting them or you know trying to kill them or trying to do all what all types of things to them so they're just in that state from the beginning to the end so that's I mean, what that's what look, makes it scary the fact that you don't know and you can't understand what you're dealing with if this film was more like uh I mean, this film struck me on a level do you remember that book where i forget the name uh, king of flies lord of the flies oh yeah yeah, yeah. i love that yeah so for, for those of you who haven't read it, the premise of the story is that a bunch of young, young boys, uh, 10, 12 years old, get stuck on an island. And they, 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 you know, they fall into chaos. Like basically human nature takes on and then you see what man truly is like at his core. Uh, and this was what struck me with that film, right? The idea that if you can ration out all the food, everyone can eat, but no one rations it out. More importantly, it's not that they're just not rationing out. No, they'll they'll have what they want to have, and then they'll shit on everything else there is to eat. You know what I mean? Like the dude, not literally. Not literally, but <laughs> close enough to literally. Close enough to literally, right? So it's just I, I got that premise, and I like the idea of this dude who walks in. Who, I'm gonna quit smoking. I'm gonna read Don Quixote. Uh, it'll, it'll be a transformative six months, and I'll put it on a resume. You know, like I have my diploma. It's all. And I, I like that idea, <laughs> <laughs> and I loved the idea of the the lady that worked there coming in. Now I didn't fully understand um, the power intended the director had by oh I've worked here for 25 years, and for the first eight I had no clue what was going on. Okay, but then you later find, found out. 
And then if you're dying of cancer, why did you come here? I, I still don't follow that. And then if you're dying with, of cancer, why did you bring your dog? I don't follow that either. It's just, okay, I'm going to put all that aside because that's not really what the movie is about. The movie is about this dude who's trying, like, he's now understanding humanity. He's seeing life from a different lens. He's seeing it as it truly is. Uh, and he's almost done. He has one month to go, and he could survive the month anywhere. He's going to spend the second to last month eating, so he can survive that last month of hunger anywhere. But he decides, like, screw surviving. I'm going to help everyone. Okay. Okay, I get it. You're, you're going to be a hero. I've seen Batman. I get what a hero is, you know? <laughs> First of all, one of the things that will bug me before I get back to the hero thing is the whole 330-something levels. 333. 300 floors at 3 meters of height. You're talking about 1,000 meters. How the fuck did you do? Like, a, like a, I will like the fact that this platform goes up and down without cords and cables. Uh, that's fine. I'll believe it. I'll, I'll figure that out. 333 floors? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. That would be a feat of engineering. Anyway, so he, he, he's like, I'm going to be here when he goes down. And when he gets to the, 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 the final floor, you know, he miscounts and they end up on that final floor. And it's 333. You know, and you know, 666 is the devil. I remember like a priest explained to me that 333 is apparently the, the God or Jesus or the Lord or whatever he called it. So like, and then you put that into perspective with the worker who earlier was talking about eat my flesh and she starts quoting Bible scripture where God says, you know, eat my flesh, drink my blood. I will be part of you. You'll be part of me and all that. And then floor three, three, three. And I was like, okay, they're going for some sort of Jesus angle. I, I get it. Didn't, didn't really understand the full significance. Where did that little girl come from? I still don't follow that. Yeah, it. Uh, there were quite a few questions that were left unanswered. Plus, um, I mean, if we also want to take physics into consideration, um, that girl going up that fast at yeah. the end. Yeah, that it wouldn't end well. Like, plus, I'm like, and then it made no sense to me. I think it goes back to that Deus Ex Machina thing where that lady was always coming from the top. Yeah, She's always. The, yeah, it's like, the one with the, the child or whatever. Yeah, I'm like. If 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 damn, she, came, she had she had a lot of lo luck, yeah. It's, no, no, it's not that a lot of luck. It's you, you're always coming from the top, but you're always going all the way back down. So you're going to the bottom to then end up on the top to then go back down again. And then how the fuck do you get back up? Yeah, that was something. So I was like. So if she wanted to get out, she could have gotten out a long time ago because it Which doesn't is, stop. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at any floor when it's going back up. It goes right to the first floor. And then that so was the logic she, the, the guy was trying to use. He's like, okay, we'll go down, uh, down, and we'll go all the way to the zeroth floor to escape. Well, you saw the lady come down. You know she can't escape. And then and the, the lady then, that worked no, besides, there said there's no way out. Plus, I'm like, okay, so you know how, like, at some point in the movie was revealed that, you know, these um, exceptional cooks or chefs or whatever, you know, that set the table, like, you know, they take all their time, they set the table on that whatever la level zero, and then it goes all the way that, down. Yeah. Basically, if that lady, say, if that lady had somehow managed to get to that floor, there was no other way for her her to go down except when it was time for it to go down so that means that those people would have seen her yep and then and they would have had to get off the locations. table yeah and then what at that point she'll just sit down somewhere and be like all right get the table ready i'm gonna sit back on this thing but i mean hey let you know it's possible she had a kid down there so plot magic yeah, but, plot armor and then it was kind of funny that you know this i and I guess it's not a problem of the movie. It just, to me, it just feels like the character failed, the guy with the book, because he was trying to, you know, introduce this idea to make everyone change. But in order to enforce his idea, he had to use violence. Yeah, <laughs> so, and then it was the spontaneous solidarity. He was like, it can't be spontaneous. Okay, I'll accept that premise. You had a friend or what seemed like a friend, uh, the obviously guy, the old guy. 
uh, he presented as a friend. They were reading Don Quixote together. They were, for some reason, stretching naked with one another. I get it, right? And then quickly he turned on you. So I get the, the significance of this. But what I didn't understand was way at the end where he goes, the message doesn't need the bearer. What are you staying down there for? Oh, no. Oh, you mean, no, he was dead. I think that was just like some kind of... Oh, some know. sort of like fight club bullshit? Yeah, I think it was just, they kind of took it in a metaphorical direction. Like, yeah, he he died. Hey, man. He was about to die. And that guy was the one who led him to... Watching this film, I just... I, I owe Midsummer an apology because I called Midsummer whack. And if that's whack, I need a new word for this shit. Not uh, impressed. Wizzy, wizzy, whack. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I first started watching it, it was the English dubbed version, and I hated that the, what they were saying didn't match their lips. So I sent it back to Spanish, <laughs> and I started uh, reading the, the fucking, what do they call it? Subtitles. The so subtitles, I, yeah. Yeah, I guess like I don't read fast enough at some points, so I'm having to rewind a couple of things. Yeah. So it's like, ugh, you made me read, which I'm not a fan of. The story was boring, which I'm not a fan of. The ending was absolute horseshit, which I'm not a fan of. And you have unanswered questions, which I'm not a fan of. And it's just, ugh, it just fell flat. And then whatever, like, I hate movies that try to be smart. But then, like, one of two things happen. You're either too smart for your audience or you weren't smart at all, right? Like, you're making a movie and you're trying to be smart. I get it. You're a brilliant filmmaker with a brilliant script. If the audience doesn't get your message, did you even send a message? Right? Yeah. If a tree fell in the forest and no one was around. They didn't make a sound. Make a noise. Yeah. Uh, if I don't, and I don't consider yeah. myself an idiot, like I'm, I'm uh, sure I'm not a smart guy. I'm not by far the smartest, but I'm not a moron. So if I'm on the average Joe and the average Joe watched this film and went, what the yeah. fuck was that all about? You done fucked up as a filmmaker. Well, here's the thing. Um, in Moviescape or, you know, whatever, um, at least, you know, in, the, in this Corona, these Corona times or whatever, people... People refer to that movie as smart. Um, I, I think it had, had smart elements or interesting elements, um, and I think it was it was an interesting allegory on society. I don't think they were necessarily trying to. No, I at some points part. it felt like they were trying. I, I, it, it seemed like at certain points that's it, as if they were trying to drive home a point, but maybe that wasn't what it was. Maybe it was just showing all the failings of society. And that's why it was unresolved in the end because no. you want you want to do that. Give me a closed ending that shows me society is is what it is. Have the other people kill him. I would have been glad to have that dude be killed because he had food but, that he wouldn't give or some reason to be eaten. But they or died. Whatever. They they both died eventually, and there's no chance. I mean, there's no there's no telling the girl who might have died. She might have reached the top of whatever and just bounced off the ceiling like it was going too fast. And she just <laughs> yeah, it was but, a hit and a miss. They completely done fucked up. I just I don't think I enjoyed anything about the film. Like literally, like at least Midsummer, the opening was good. Like I shot on it, but the opening was good. I detested Bane's role in Batman, but I had like silver lining and silver linings everywhere. This film, I mean, I just there was no redeeming quality. There wasn't a moment that I enjoyed. It was, I mean, if anything, I will say it was a interesting premise. That's it. You lost me at everything you know else. What? Yeah, since I'm not going to be picking movies for a while, um, <laughs> I guess I, I, I another movie I'd love to get your thoughts on, but that's not going to happen. So I'm just going to kind of give. No, 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 no. We can do it. Well, what, no, 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 no. Because no, it's a movie that I didn't like. Oh, it's okay. a movie that everyone else praised, and it, I think it? it even got an Oscar or whatever. Parasite. The King's Speech. Oh, okay, Parasite. No, Parasite. Like. It's 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 beloved. It's beloved, mm. but when I watched the movie, I was like, "This is fucking stupid." Like, 
when and I don't mean like seen not it, but like keep going. Fu- not 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 like not like fucking stupid. This is fucking stupid. I was actually pissed off that I had taken the time for how many weeks trying to get a version I could watch online because somehow I wasn't able to watch it while it was in theaters. And then when I finally watched it, I was like, this is a dumbass shit that's getting everyone like, oh my God, a Korean movie. Oh my fucking goodness. It's so, it's so brilliant. Oh, he's the, he's the greatest. I mean, of course they won't use simple words like he's great. He's a great director or whatever. They start using like, you know, sublime and stupid shit like that. It was just fucking ridiculous, fucking stupid. And just a fucking waste of everyone's time. And sorry. That's, that's how I felt about Twilight. Movies. Twilight, I mean, you're not the only one. But when I watched this, I watched it with someone else and I felt like that person appreciated the movie and I was like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, yeah, the people were supposed to be, the poor people were supposed to be fucking smart and the the rich people were supposedly super dumb. But how did they even make their money anyway? Like, it was just, anyway, sorry, when you have the time to watch something stupid, just think of it as a comedy and watch it when you have a Definitely chance. But yeah, don't, fucking don't dumbass. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the platform uh, could have been miss. smart. Right? It, yeah. But, uh, yeah. We should start I'll giving these to... movies, like, uh, numer- numbered ratings at the end, like, one out of ten or whatever. Just for shits and giggles, oh, I'm no, giving man. this film... A very solid two, two out of ten. Uh, let's see. I'm on the fence, so on the fence for me is a five. Five? Okay. You are a yeah. no. motherfucker. I swear to God, if you give this film a five, and then the films I pick get anything less than a five, I'm gonna kill you. I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let, let let me see if I can break down my five. Um, I'll say seven on the idea. Uh, seven five on, on the filmmaking? The dialogue. No, 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 no. Seven dialogue? on the dialogue. Okay. It's good. I like that you're coming up with a rubric. I, we, should impl- we should definitely get a rubric going. Okay, keep going. Maybe, so maybe three on the s- execution. Because the story, execution, I, I, execution, break it down the story has a lot of story or filmmaking. Because the story had a lot of the sto- Okay, for the filmmaking, there I don't think there was much to do. You could tell that they were on a tight budget. Um, you know, uh, visual, just visual effects. Okay, maybe I don't, I didn't see it as a tight budget, but okay. Uh, I mean, I, I don't mean, see it as 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 a costing a lot of money to make. It costs nothing. What I meant was, I don't think a Netflix-funded movie is on that but tight yeah, of a budget. The... I don't think it doesn't seem like it, it seems like a movie that Netflix bought after it was made. That could be. But it. I, I, like I, wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Yeah, it's like, oh shit! How do we keep people interested? Oh, this yeah, probably yeah. got a buzz somewhere. Let's just buy this shit. Never it does seem like that artsy fartsy <laughs> bullshit that filmmakers yeah. make in college. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Like, yeah. Watching films like this just makes me miss Adam Sandler films. <laughs> it's like you tried to be artistic and you failed miserably, so fuck off. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Adam Sandler, yeah, and his shit. I mean every now and then there's a uh, there's a diamond in that pile of feces, but you gotta you gotta dig. <laughs> Man, wasn't digging it. I like Adam Sandler. So. Hill. I like Adam Sandler. It shows. Oh fuck you. <laughs> I swear to God, like we're gonna be reviewing Big Daddy next, guys. Like that's it. <laughs> no, no. I mean, no. yeah, I was I was trying to work my way through the room brick and i mean like i was going to i was going to give something minus something so that eventually it would <laughs> it averages out to, like you're trying to do out. the math in your head as you review it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i can't do it right now um I but hey 10 you know from McKean, two out of ten for me that averages out to three and a half so movie movie butter gives it three and a half out of ten i don't know i don't know if i feel comfortable with numbers let's just Sell shit, and people can decide what they want to 
with the sometimes movies, so words sometimes words cannot express what numbers can but sometimes numbers just give the wrong idea because if you give something three over ten it come it might come off as if you you there's not much to salvage from the movie but i'm just like you know, in this movie, yeah i, I yeah, I appreciate the story in a sense. The premise, the premise, but not there was the just story. something about it. The yeah, the premise, not the, story. the premise. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, well, I think and, now is as yeah. good a time as any to reveal what we will be watching for next week, given that I get to make the call, and it's a film called About Time. Oh, isn't that the one with Justin Timberlake? No. No. Is that the one? One with Amy, oh sorry, the girl from um, Rachel that McAdams? Nick Sparks. Yeah. I don't think it's a Nicholas Sparks film. The Nick of Nicholas Sparks story. Okay. Nicholas Sparks is the writer, right? Oh no 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 no! He didn't write the story. So I'm there. There are two time movies that are in my head right now. So it's either the one with Justin Timberlake, Not or him. the one with Amy. Oh sorry, I keep calling it Rachel. Like Adams. Adams or whatever, so. It's called About Time. It's about two hours long. It's it's a romantic film, but if you watch it, it's not about the romantic story. I mean, it is, but it's it's about more, a lot more than the romance and the. Uh, it's it's a good film to watch. Fuck you with your I, eyebrow. I think, you don't I get think, to give me the eyebrow after making me watch these two films that you made me watch for the past two weeks. Okay, know, so get the fuck right this off. This is kind Akeem. of extreme. No, it's not this is kind dude, of extreme, dude, dude, dude. You're making me go from dark to. It's like going from heavy metal to listening to the gospel, gospel music. <laughs> it's not that bad. I think you will actually enjoy it. Uh, just, just give it a go. It's two hours from your life. You watch this horse shit and you won't watch my film? Come on, man. All right, all right. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed our discussion of the platform. Uh, we'll see you next week when we discuss about time if Akeem can survive it. I think he might roll his eyes so far back you might see his brain a couple of times. But uh, <laughs> till then, barring any... Suicide attempts by Akeem. We will be back next week discussing about time, and uh, hopefully, you guys can watch it from now until then. Thank you, and before Akeem tells you to fuck off, goodbye. Uh, thank you for your patronage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're, you're well behaved there. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs>